Welcome back, everybody. We are here with Ken, who is shooting towards Valentine's Day with a DIY Cupid's quiver and arrows that will instantly have you falling in love. It's a lot of pressure, Ken. It's a lot of Can pressure. Can you handle it? It's a lot of pressure. So, Valentine's Day. And Valentine's Day is an interesting holiday because a lot of times it goes towards the suite or to your kids and all that. And I like the idea of doing some Valentine's decor that's just a little bit more adult and a little bit more sophisticated that you can work into your standard entry hall, into your dining room, um, that might meld a little bit better with your everyday decor. I think that's a great so idea. So I decided to do this. this that's is a Cupid's, great idea. Cupid's quiver. Is Cupid's having a cup of coffee or, you know, taking a little, like, potty break. He oh, throws see. his quiver down and you stumble upon it. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. So he's, this is a busy guy. guy. Yeah. We've got our patterns that you've got laid out here for the uh, the quiver itself. What else do we need? Well, our pattern's going to be online. So you can go online okay. to, to our website and download that. And then you're going to need some scrap leather. You can get it at a craft store, ribbon, dowels, a little bit of cardstock, some feathers, leather punch, twine, paint, Mod Podge, and a little glitter. A lot of that you're already going to have in your craft kit, so just go and start rooting around. I like that materials list, by the way. Okay, so firstly, we are cutting out... Right. Cut out your leather. pattern, okay, very good. trace it onto your leather, and then you're going to go ahead and cut out your leather. Okay. I've already cut use, this one mostly out. You're using scissors here. Could you use a rotary? You know, a cut? rotary cutter, it's a great question. A rotary cutter is really great for leather. It's going to give you nice straight lines. Okay. Um, it would actually be better than the scissors, but you're not not going to be able to use it around these tight curves. Right, so use a little it, bit right. So use scissors or a combination of both. Okay. Well, on that note, do we need to use leather for this? What other material would you recommend? You don't. You can yeah. use um, pleather. You could also do this whole thing with poster board or card sock. Sure. I like the leather because we had it, and I like the rustic quality. It's but very you, Ken. The leather. It's very me. I like yeah. I like a good suede quiver. I think that's what Cupid would have. I um, would have to guess that that's the case. <laughs> Once you cut it out, what yep. you're going to do is I went along the edge here, and just with a ruler marked one inch. Okay. Okay. Dots on either side. I've got my leather hole punch here, and I'm just going to go through on both sides and just quickly punch it out. Obviously, if you're using cardstock or anything like that, you can just use a regular hole punch. Okay, all the great. Way go ahead and punch that out. Then you're going to get your decoration here, and you're just going to, with a little bit of hot glue or fabric glue, Go ahead and glue. I like how you've done the side. contrasting inside. The exactly, yes. so just a little bit of subtle, subtle detail. I think that's what Cupid would have had. Well, I like that you're thinking from Cupid's perspective. Right. It is durable yet stylish. Um, okay, now, now you're going to lace it up. All I did was get pink ribbon, um, tied a little bit of tape on the end so it would hold, and then I'm just going to go through and tie it just like you would, you know, tie a shoe or, or what have you. Um, and, and the ribbon really is, I mean, I think that it's, it's got a lot of um, sort of impact there. You chose a nice pink, bright ribbon to kind of contrast some of the more neutral colors of the, uh, the quiver itself. That's exactly it. When you're doing this, you don't want it to become sort of Sherwood Williams, I mean, um, Sherwood Forest sort of quiver. So you want to sort of find a, a happy spot between your cute Valentine's Day and your more sort of sophisticated rustic. Fantastic. So I think the pink just does that. Okay, so we got that's that all done. done. Now we're going to work on the strap a little bit. I'm going to test your, you're a father of a daughter with I long am. hair, as I am I, am. All, I am. a little bit of braiding. What I okay. have here is I paired up a wide ribbon and a short ribbon and a piece okay. of rope, and you're just going to go ahead. I tied one end in a bow. I'm not going to lie to you. It's been a while since I've been able to Look, you still got it. You still got it. It's, it was one of my favorite things to do. And then can you finish morning. it with a French braid at the very end yeah. with a little twist and an up That's where I handed back <laughs> to you, Ken, and you take over, but you continue doing the little braid Continue there. that. I like the sort of messy rusticness of it. I and thought the, you were going to say the messy the messiness of my braid. No, no, no. Of the, of the, um, you did no. great. And I do too. Yeah, mixing the ribbon with the, with the uh, twine with the rope. Again, because it's all about that mix of sort of rustic and um, and fancy. Now, all I'm going to do here, if I can get my finger in here, is just well, first I'm going to tie this into a knot. Okay. And then I'm just going to tuck that knot into the bottom of my quiver, and that's oh, going to be see. because this isn't obviously going to be really used, right. so you don't need to make it super um, super durable. Well, that's smart. So that knot will catch it on the inside of the quiver, exactly. So it'll hold there. And then so leave your leave your ribbon sort of like hanging out at the end. Okay, great. And then we're going to do the same with the do top. the same thing on the top. We're just going to take this top one, and really that is it. You leave the end in a nice bow. I'm going to do a little knot here to secure it. Look how good that looks too. Right, and then you've got this sort of rustic sort of half. Half dainty, half sweet. He's good, Remember, everybody. He's there good, we go. But we're not done yet. We ha we want to uh, go through. Some we got to do our arrows. Yeah. So for our arrows, there's um. What you're gonna do is cut out an arrow pattern that's just like this here. Yeah. All you're gonna do is fold that in half, and that's gonna give you sort of a three-dimensional arrow. Great. Hit that with a little Mod Podge and glitter, and that's gonna be your arrowhead. And then I got an 18-inch dowel, and I'm gonna take this sort of metallic paste which we have, and I love. 
little paper towel and I'm just gonna rub that right onto my dowel here. Now, I was asking you why you didn't use regular paint for this, and you gave a great answer, and I think it's a good tip for everybody. Part of it is laziness, because painting around things <laughs> well, is hard. That's not what it, like, it, roll, it rolls around. Plus, okay. I think the rub does give it a nice sort of metallic yeah. sort of glean. Yeah. Um, these things are inexpensive. They don't go bad. You don't need a brush. It's that's hard to paint those round, uh, those round things. So, so you've got your... Um, the dowel painted, right. you've got the arrowhead, and now? Little dot of glue in there, and that attaches our head, yep. and then for the end, for the feather, I'm just getting a standard craft feather. I've split it down the center with an X-Acto knife, and then all I'm gonna do, cut it right there, trim it up a little bit, and then all you need to do, split it apart. I'm gonna add my glue on to my, here we go, I'll do that so you can see it there, on to my arrow. Yeah and then just get this and attach this to either side. Just like that, and it's a real feathered arrow, everybody. And then what I did um, to make it just a little bit fancier yeah. is once I've done that, I let it dry, a little bit of Mod Podge, and just a touch of glitter on the end. That sort of, of makes it all, just that little bit of that little bit of magic. Fantastic. Then all we're gonna do, bring it over here. You've got your sort of setup. I have sort of Cupid's to-do list. He was right in the middle of doing that when he ran to take his little break. Did he? I see some names on that list that I recognize, I gotta Set say. Set that up I, there. Uh, add I don't our know which camera and Vanessa it. might be on there. There's Ken and Mike. There's, you know, there's <laughs> Liz a lot. Taylor there's and, Liz Taylor. Well, that depends and on what year he's depends working. Depends on what year, Ken. <laughs> you did it again, buddy. There you You're go. awesome. Full instructions. You know where to go. HallmarkChannel.com.